Welcome back. As mentioned, our guest today is 14th Judicial Circuit uh, Judge Jim Fensom. Call me naive. Um, does every county have its own courthouse and court system? Yes. Okay. But every county does not have its own. Uh, well, I guess every, every county does have a circuit judge assigned to that county. We've got six counties and we have 11 circuit judges. Okay, so you rotate between all of those six counties? It just depends. I mean, there have been judges that, I mean, Mike Overstreet I know is set in every county, it seems like one time or another, and due to the way I was able to do, I was doing dependency and they were happy to leave me in there. So I didn't travel to do dependency, I stayed in Bay County. But Judge, Judge Fischel has been in St. Joe and Mariana and part-time in Panama City. Uh, Judge Patterson is in Chipley Bonifee, you know, back and forth, and that's his full-time full -time assignment. So, I mean, every, every county has a dedicated circuit judge and, and certainly a dedicated county judge. That's what you're elected as. And Bay County has the four county judges. So, as a circuit judge, you are voted at large by all of voters in those six counties. Correct. Um, and at times that may be challenging because, as you just pointed out, some of these judges may not spend much time in some of those counties. That's true. That's true. That's a, that's a challenge. You know, it just did occur to me when, after, that, so that, after that question that I asked that in some places you may not be known at all if you if you're not assigned to do cases right well during my uh, almost 30 years of law practice I tried cases in each one of the six counties at one time or another and had hearings in each one of the counties and as a circuit judge covering for other judges I believe I have been in every county as a circuit judge but primarily I have been in in Bay County and I'm glad that you talk about the practice of law because that was going to be my next series of questions is let's get to know you a little bit better. Um, talk a little bit about uh, Jim Fensom, uh, your education, how you got into law, what was your motivation and, and some of that. I had been interested in the law field for, for years, even in high school, and kept, kept looking at it and, and decided to go ahead and apply and, and to go to law school. And I went to law school and, and uh, found it very, very interesting. And I did kind of, I guess you'd say, take to the study of law and uh, was interning, one of my interesting experiences, I was interning as a um, law student with an assistant state attorney, and I was in my second year of law school, and I had assisted him with trying two or three cases. He developed pneumonia, and I was not supposed to try cases by myself as a second year law student, but I went into the um, uh, Walcola County uh, Courthouse in Crawfordville, and, and the judge said, I said, uh, Judge, the um, our prosecutor's not here today, we'll need to continue these cases. And he said, no, sir, you're going to go ahead and try them. So as a second year law student over the period of two or three weeks, while Cliff Davis was my uh, teacher and uh, the assistant state attorney while he was sick, uh, I tried three or four different felonies by myself, which was a very unusual experience and, and had good results on those cases. So. Now, um, I know from previous exp uh, conversation with you that um, uh, you've had some interesting and, uh, experiences and, and anecdotally um, quite, a, quite a, a history in law. Um, at one point you did uh, talk about um, the, the fact that uh, uh, you started off by trying a case against somebody and ended up going to work for them. Talk a little right. bit about that. Well, when I first went to, uh, started practicing law, I was in Panama City. I was an assistant state attorney working with Leo Jones. And there was a case that was a political case, I would say. There was a local politician crime uh, charged with a misdemeanor. It was not a felony. And I was designated as a prosecutor on the case. There were only three full-time assistant state attorneys in Panama City at that time. So I was designated as a prosecutor. Well, the defendant in the case was a friend of Dempsey Barron. And Senator Dempsey Barron was then dean of the Florida Senate. So we tried that case, it was me, and at that time I must have been about 28 years old, and Dempsey Barron, and he had a couple other lawyers with him. And the other unusual factor is the Supreme Court had just passed a rule about having cameras in the courtroom, and they were going to try that on a trial basis, having cameras in the courtroom. So not only was that an interesting trial, it was the very first case in the state of Florida that was actually on TV. Interesting. Certainly a, a part of Florida history. Oh, it was. It was, it was interesting. You know, um, many times I guess it could be said that the judge is in a no-win situation. If you have to make a judgment, it's going to be for one side or the other. You may not be judge, uh, making a ruling against somebody, but you're definitely making a ruling for the other party, which by, by, by inference is against the, the other party. Um, what's, the, what's the biggest challenge in, in sitting on the bench? 
Well, many of the cases, I, I don't want to put a percentage on it, but way more than half of the cases, the result is fairly evident, you know, and then, then you have a small percentage of the cases that are, are difficult. And you look at the facts and you look at the law and you look at what the witnesses said and you look to see if the witnesses contradict each other or if the witnesses agree. You look at the documents, the photographs, and try to determine who has the best recollection of what actually happened. Not that some people are intentionally not telling the truth. It's just because of the emotion of the moment. They see it one way, the other side sees it the other way. When the player in the Florida FSU game steps on the edge of the goal line or the sideline, the FSU people see it one way and the Florida people see it the other way. Well, I'm the guy in the red and, and the black and the white stripe. My job is to be impartial and, to, and call it as best I can. And there are some cases that are difficult. And quite frankly, there are some cases that you look at the law, you look at the history, you look at the situation, and the law dictates one answer. That is the proper answer, and that will be affirmed on appeal. And I may not necessarily like that result, but my job is to follow the law. I'm not in the legislature. My job is not to draft up the laws. My job is to follow the laws. You mentioned uh, during that earlier story that there were only, at that time, three prosecutors in the state attorney's office. Much bigger office now. Yes. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what makes up the state attorney's office now? Well, the state attorney's office is much, much larger now. There were three full-time assistant state attorneys in Panama City, and then I think Jim Appleman was in Mariana, and he was full-time in the Jackson County area. The other people were part-time. The big difference in my mind of why the volume is so much different is about 50% of our cases now are drug-related directly, drug charges. Another 25% of our cases are people committing crimes to get money for drugs. So we had just a smaller um, area of crime. We just had what you'd call the routine break-ins and things of that nature. And now we have all of those and we have all this, you know, this drug issue. So the drug, the drug problem has uh, magnified the number of cases uh, that we have. And then, of course, the population has increased.